Yes, lads, Jay Blean here, and today we've got another episode of the Manchester City Career Mood. As always, massive thanks to EA for letting me go down to the capture event in London to record this footage early for you guys, presented by the EA Game Changers Network. Let's jump into the episode. So it's another case, as I was mentioned last season, we're just going to focus on training these five guys. These are the guys that I want to level the most. I should have maybe be done it on Mendy as well, instead of maybe De Bruyne, De Bruyne, because he's already highly rated. But I just wanted to see how much I could push De Bruyne, just to get him that little bit more higher rated. But hey, they're the decisions you make in life. You make them, you stick to them, and you follow through with them, and you own them. And they're the decision we make. So it is deadline day, but with about... I think it was about 60 million I had left to spend 40 million. I just really wasn't sure who to buy. So in the end, I didn't actually buy anybody on deadline day. I didn't want to buy anybody for the sake of it. So I thought, let's save some cash for the January window instead. And then we've got a little bit of a war kitty to use then. So pretty boring deadline day for us with nobody coming in. So a few more went out alone and whatnot. Um, Mangala we sold off because we realised we don't actually need him. We don't really plan. We looked at Casemiro. He'd already gone to Juventus by the time we looked. We looked at Royce. He'd signed for Real Madrid. There'd been a lot of moves going in and out. Arsenal signed Juan Fran from Atletico Madrid. And we had a game against Liverpool at the Etihad Stadium. It was going to be a tough one. Our first real challenge in the league. Obviously, we had simmed that game against Watford, which didn't go too well. So we had to make sure we could get some points on the board today. And at home against Liverpool, it was not going to be an easy game. But we were confident. We was in decent form when playing. We were still getting used to it, scraping out narrow wins, obviously. Insigne saved it. Well, he didn't save us because he was in control. We just couldn't finish the rest of our chances. And luckily, our defence held up. So it was all good. And we was about to kick off. Just waited for the whistle and there it was off. We was off and we were raring to go straight away and Singer knocked it down to Sterling but nothing came to it. It did come back to us into the middle but now gonna find De Bruyne who found Walker. Seeing Aguero make space. Aguero had some space. He just had the man to beat. He managed to turn luckily. Took a little pop shot in the bottom left corner for Ness and we was one little up instantly and I was thinking okay I'm going to probably have to put the difficulty up if once we get comfortable it is going to be this easy. So we held it out, but thought, let's just make sure, because we're still getting used to the game, of course, and that's just the way the cookie crumbles. But Liverpool did have their chances. We did manage to box it well, not always clearing it first time of asking, but Edison, Edison was on hand when needs be. 21 minutes in, we had Sterling, put it across, cleared off what was potentially going in the line, and then we missed an absolute sitter. Keeper made himself big. But the post stopped us and then De Bruyne shot wide. Liverpool were raring to go though. Henderson found space in the box, took a shot and Edison was there on hand. Henderson is already making some very strong saves and I'm just glad we ain't got Bravo in there before. But Insigne with a clever turn, couldn't quite convert it. Mignolet doing just enough and Wijnaldum shot wide. And that was how that half was about to end. So we came into this second half. Liverpool still pressing strong. It's getting bodies in the way, which was great. If you're not going to make the tackle, you're going to make them block. And Mendy was raring to go from that. Charged down the wing, crossed it in. Sterling, not really the man you want to be trying to get a header in front. But Sterling was going to redeem himself here. But he wasn't. It was a poor shot in the end. We thought he'd made space, but he hadn't. But Sane, we'd just brought on, was raring to go in the box couldn't quite get a clean shot away but Gabriel Jesus now on the pitch horribly taking down not sure why the ref didn't call a free kick in the 82nd minute there and that was full time we managed to get the win it wasn't pretty it wasn't ugly it was quite tense but we did just enough we'd secured the win Gundogan and Nangola and the midfield dynamos in the end celebrating and we had an away trip to CSK Moscow someone in the comments section in episode 2 said don't sim away games I was about to find out another reason why. But as per the series, to make sure I could complete one season, it was the case that I had to do. I had to play two, sim two or three, an episode. And that's how it went. It fell on it. that It was CSK Moscow in the opening stages. One all after 55 minutes. And then they made it 2-1. Vitinho with a double. The Brazilian skiller. We was hoping we could pull something back. We'd brought David Silver on for Gundogan. Could he inject a change to the game? He could not. We had lost 2-1. And that hurt. It hurt a lot. 
So it was time to play Watford and I thought to keep the episodes interesting, game at the start, game at the end, we'll sim in between. So it was away at Watford and was it about to high out? Off the back, Britain in the first minute. What on earth's going on there? Why is Britain scor- scoring in the first minute? That was not happy. That was not happy at all. And this is the Watford game. I think I've just spoiled it earlier on thinking Watford is in the previous episode, but it wasn't. But as you're about to see here... 60 minutes in, we make a change. Fernandinho on for nine goal, and not the attacking change we need. Otamendi gets injured. Gundogan's been carded. 10 minutes to go. Nothing in sight. Full time. We've lost 1 0 to Watford. Disastrous. That's two sim losses in a row. We think, uh, we get Oxford in the cup, and I'm thinking, this isn't really much of a game. Probably should have put youth in the team. But I didn't. I just went straight into it. Realised I couldn't back out and change the squad. Uh, but Insigne was on hand and he wanted to make sure that we didn't lose three games in a row. Insigne on the 19th minute. Sterling on the 40th minute. Those wingers combine in to create goals, which is what we're looking for. Gundogan gets involved in the action to make it 3-0. And really, it's quite an easy, straightforward victory, which you'd expect it to be when we're playing a full strength side. David Silva getting in the act to make it 4-0. And it's a very straightforward win. Probably should have gave some of the youngsters a run out there, but it had happened and we had to live with it and we'd got the win. At least we didn't lose three in a row. It was time to play Crystal Palace and it was a very, very wet, rainy day in Manchester. And we just thought, is this going to restrict our explosive, free-flowing, wing attack game? And Palace are quite a physical side. I felt in this weather it could be a tough game and straight away from the off De Bruyne tried to come in just couldn't get any fruitation to the attack and it was cleared away we did have a corner from it though and De Bruyne whipped this in and we're still struggling for corners this year we haven't quite mastered them or practiced them enough yet and this is how Palace were going to play all game they were going to whip that ball in route one football getting the ball into the box Edison on hand and we're only nine minutes in and we've already had numerous chances at both ends they've got themselves a corner Luckily, it's not got much connection to it. And Edison climbs away. Throws it out to Aguero. Very big pick out. Aguero is going to see space down the channel. He's going to run it. He wants Sterling in support. He sees Sterling there. He's going to ignore Sterling. Sees the dummy. Aguero is going all the way by himself. Aguero is going for the win. And Aguero has made it 1-0. Aguero picking it up from Edison. I keep his claim to the assist there. Aguero's for Hold on a minute. Palace are giving us a game here. I'm not having that on my watch. Run straight down the other end. De Bruyne again. Narrow chance. And we've got another free kick. Not a free kick, sorry. A corner kick. That's the one I meant. Corner kick, header. Not a real connection. Wide. 17 minutes in. And this game has shown no signs of slowing down. We need to get another one. Maybe we should try and drop the tempo of the game a bit. They make a mistake from the out. Aguero picks it up. Aguero looks around. He sees a space. Miss pass, but De Bruno picks it up, knocks it back to Aguero, and Aguero's going to thread it. And it's a disastrous mistake by the keeper. Absolutely disastrous mistake, but we don't mind. We're going to capitalise. We're going to take the 2 0 win. I just want to show you here. You may have seen on Twitter a lot of us at HD if you don't follow me already. Keepers are terrible. They need fixing. And this just highlights it. This isn't like, yeah, it's, it's realistic that keepers should make mistakes from time to time, but it's happening way too much in the game and it needs fixing. Otherwise, it's going to be full of goals this year and while I'm complaining about that they clang a po- bit, 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 bit. I don't even know what I've just said but they clang the post slash bar in the upper right and they're still putting this pressure on they're 2-0 down and they're attacking more than ever Van and Holt pitches a man in the box whips it in and Kabai of all men gets the head on it not really challenged it kind of just sailed to it it was a great delivery by Van and Holt don't get me wrong I was just hoping that our defenders might have done a little bit more. But Kabai's going to run. He's going to celebrate with his manager. It's not Steve Bruce. Why would it be Steve Bruce? Sorry. It's not De Boer because De Boer has been sacked. It's just a generic manager anyway. It doesn't really matter who it is. Roy Hodgson is in charge now. He's not in charge for this game. Second half is slowed down a little bit. We have a couple of chances. But there's nothing too real out of the chances. We're more trying to walk it into the box at this stage. Which probably isn't the right thing to do. We didn't do it in the first half, so I don't know why we need to do it in this half. De Bruyne, De Bruyne gets a shot away just wide. And Gabriel Jesus is on now. I've been bringing him on for the last 10, 15 in most games. He's got a nice bit of pace to inject off the bench. They get a shot right at the end of the game. It's not enough. They get another one. Benteke, Benteke's through. Benteke shoots. Benteke's wide. 
and that sums up the game. They attacked a lot, but they didn't quite get the chances they needed, so he was going to take the victory. It was 2-1 in the dying stage of the game, but we still had one more chance to go. Gundogan saw Aguero, sorry, not Aguero, Gabriel Jesus, we took Aguero off. Jesus taken out, but the rest decided once again, no penalty. Probably no need with it being the dying seconds of the game, but we secured a 2-1 victory, which was very much needed after that loss away to Watford. And we found ourselves on top of the table. What, five wins, one loss. Chelsea, just behind us on the tails. It was sure to be tough, but do leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new here. Come follow me on Twitter, at Jubilee and HD, and I'll see you all later. Peace. <laughs>